Happy Halloween, Tigers, and welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Kelly Kennedy. And I'm Tiffany Plourd. EOT's Addison Mahon was on scene at the bonfire last Thursday, getting the scoop on students' Halloween plans and their experience at the event. Over to you, Addie. Thanks, guys. I'm here at the bonfire catching up with some Tigers on their Halloween plans. What are your plans for Halloween? Um, honestly, I'm probably just going to stay in and watch a movie. I'm going to keep it low-key. Um, what the... I'm not doing anything. I'm hanging out with Chase Munoz. Hey, Miley. What are your plans for Halloween? Um, I'm going to be a boxer, and I'm going to go trick-or-treating in the rich neighborhoods. What are your plans for Halloween? I'm going to pass out candy as a skeleton. Tuesday, I think we're going to watch our best friends in the volleyball playoff game. And then after, we're going to hang out probably at someone's house. Go on! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trick or treating. I'm gonna be Wreck It Ralph. Uh, what are you doing on Halloween? Uh, what? <laughs> what are you doing on Halloween? Uh, sleeping. All day? Yeah. Wait, I mean, don't we have school? Yeah, going to school and the sleeping. Like, <laughs> how do you feel about the bonfire tonight? Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Julian Nurse had a really good performance. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Can I get some more energy? I wish we were playing poker tonight, you know. I love you, Abby. Hey, but aren't you guys playing poker on Tuesday? On Halloween? Oh, we are. Oh! Um, I'm loving the bonfire. The bonfire is going over here. We got Kiki's over here, you know? Once a tiger, always a tiger. Go Roseville! Oh, I feel great. It feels like a great community and also a place where everyone can join and also, you know, talk. Yeah. It's pretty lit. It's a lot better than last year's. Thanks. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bored right now, honestly, uh, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Hey, it's actually pretty lit. I thought it was going to be mid. I ain't going to lie. But when I came here, it was super fun. I can't even lie. It Facts. was pretty fun. Yeah. Facts. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> 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 how do you guys feel about um, the bonfire tonight? Um, you know, it's good, you know. I feel like it's a lot better than last year with the Kiki's chicken, and uh, but I feel like the bonfire kind of died out a little early, you know? How do you feel about the bonfire tonight? Uh, it's low-key boring. How do you feel about the bonfire tonight? Um, it's really cold. Um, it's pretty nice. I'm surprised how Boston is wearing shorts. Uh, this is lit. <laughs> We're having a great time. We're getting some kikis. It's gonna be really fun. Heck yeah! Thanks, Sadie. In other news, the canned food drive starts tomorrow and will go through the 9th. Students can turn in unexpired and non-perishable items like Top Ramen, cereal, and other boxed or canned goods. And now we go over to Sienna Moffat with sports. Good morning, and welcome to this spooky edition of EOTSN. I'm Sienna Moffitt. Last Friday, Wood Creek hosted the last Junction Bowl before league realignment. The Creek beat Roseville 33-8 and completely outplayed the Tigers from start to finish. Wood Creek's player to watch, Hakeem Anderson, led the Timberwolves in rushing with 108 yards and a touchdown. Roseville moves on from their loss and prepares for their home playoff game against Mountain House this week. Tune into Friday's show for our game preview. And other sports news. Today, girls volleyball has their final four match against Rio Americano. Rio Americano comes in at the third seat, averaging 11 kills, four aces, one block, and nine digs per set. Roseville comes in as the second seed, averaging nine and a half kills, three aces, one block, and 13 and a half digs per set in comparison. Roseville's player to watch will be Ainsley Mockery. Mockery started the playoffs off hot, leading the Tigers in kills with 11 and their game against Bear Creek and will look to continue to be a threat on offense. Rio Americano's player to watch is Livia Bacci. Bacci is their defensive star on the Rio Americano team and leads in both digs and receptions. She will need to be on her game if Rio Americano wants to advance to the finals. Girls volleyball aren't the only Tigers that are still in playoffs. Boys water polo plays El Capitan tomorrow in the Division II SJS tournament, and girls tennis has a playoff game against Christian Brothers. Stay tuned for results of those games. And that's all on your home for Roseville High School Sports, Top Plays, Breakdowns, and more, I, the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Sienna. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie came out last Friday, and it's surprisingly good. The movie has grossed $130 million globally with a mere budget of $20 million, so it's been a smash hit just this weekend alone. The movie was way better than I thought it would be, and the theater-going experience was awesome. Everyone in the theater was really enthusiastic, and the fanfare throughout the movie was palpable. The movie wasn't very scary, as to be expected for a PG-13 horror movie, but it definitely pushes the rating near the end.
entire cast is really good, with the leads Josh Hutcherson and Elizabeth Wilde definitely being the strongest actors. The animatronics done by the Jim Henson Company are amazing and stole the show in every scene they appeared in. If you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, this movie is a must-see, because it has tons of references, fan service, easter eggs, and cameos. The movie is all over the place story-wise, and I really couldn't have predicted anything that happened. I definitely recommend the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, although if you're not a big fan, it might not be the movie. But that's just a theory. And now we go back to news. Thanks, twins. Roseville High School has a long history, and with that history comes some haunting rumors and stories. We go to Sean Calvert with more. Roseville High School is currently heading into its 112th year of being established, and with that much time that has flown by, there are bound to be some stories that get brought back from the past. For Halloween, a few teachers are here to tell us some creepy or weird events that took place in the school. In the band director's office, and I, I have no idea if there's any truth to this, that there's like a, a loft that goes up to a, a higher place and that an old band director had like a bed set up in there and just weird, crazy stuff. I've heard um, that the catwalk yeah. in the little gym, like everything about the little gym is, is creepy. Um, and then um, I've heard from the librarians that in the library when it's empty, you can see someone moving through the uh, reference section. There are certainly places that have like a creepy vibe or just kind of have a weird vibe. And there are some on our campus, you know, like for example, um, there are tunnels under the campus that date back, you know, over a hundred years. Uh, and those are kind of creepy. And then some of the older buildings, like uh, I've heard, you know, people have told stories about the old gym how you could sometimes like hear sounds in there when there's like nobody in there. Um, and I don't know if that's just like old creaky buildings or what's going on in there, but the old gym does have some weird, weird sounds and things going on in it. The old gym was mentioned a couple of times and it's currently sealed off, allowing no students access to the inside. Weight conditioning teacher Mrs. Simon has experienced some creepy occurrences that happened in this gym. So when I first started working at Roseville High School, I was in the other gym that is now condemned. And when I was in there, the toilets were on sensors and they would flush without anybody in there. And the hair dryers were like up in the walls and you had to push the button to make it go off and the hair dryers would go off. Um, one time I was sitting there in Miss Dodds, I was the only one in the office and Miss Dodds' computer just started blasting music with nobody touching it. And so I would constantly like go out of my office to see who was in the locker room that was either pushing the sensors or going to the bathroom and there was nobody there. I think what happens is that this is a really old campus. I mean, it's over 100 years old. So there are some buildings and there are some rooms on this campus that, that are ancient. So a lot of stuff has happened in there. A lot of events have occurred and, uh, and they're old spaces. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if people like hear stuff or see stuff that's kind of weird or unusual and then might interpret that as ghosts. Thanks, Sean. That's it for us today on Eye the Tiger. And remember, we're always on eyethetigernews.com. Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween.